Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I am Katie, I am weak, it happened again. But today we're going to take a look at the delicious Derwent Tinted Charcoal Paint Pan Set. A little disclaimer though, I was going to have some control over my purchases, but at the local art group I go to every Thursday, which incidentally also seems to be attached to an art shop, I kind of had an accident purchasing these whilst perusing the aisles, so to speak. However, because I enjoyed the water-soluble charcoal so much from the September scroller box, this just had to happen and wow, I love them. It's your typical Derwent paint pan setup. You have 12 pans, you usually have a water brush, which I don't like, and you also have a sponge to dab your water brush on I assume. Again, I don't really use either of those. It's, it's these pans which I am preparing in front of you or what I am really interested in. There's a selection of 12 delightful colours to work with. We have dark moss, forest pine, driftwood, mountain blue, ocean deep, thistle, glowing embers, burnt embers, burnt earth, natural, dark and white. And of course this is a very very muted palette because of those beautiful charcoal particles, with the exception of the white, which I'm going to assume is chalk based. But I like the diversity of these subtle tints in there. Yes, maybe one or two of them are quite similar. I thought perhaps the greens at the top were quite, quite similar, but not at the same time. I think they did offer their own unique properties there. The more earthy tones were perhaps more closely knitted, but again though, those subtle differences are actually quite big if you just stick to using this palette. But anyway, let's crack on with a painting, shall we? They all swatched out very nicely, by the way, but I'm sure you've just seen that. So for this first picture, I'm using a hot press paper so it's nice and smooth because I want to see how the granulation effects work on this particular kind of paper. And today's subject for this painting is a badger. I did a wet and wet technique for a background, but I haven't gone into detail there. I just wanted a subtle aura around it. And again, you can use it as concentrated or diluted as you like. I went for quite a washed version. I didn't want it to overpower the foreground because obviously the charcoal particles are still gonna be the same tone. It's just the tints that are in there that sort of change the properties of it, we'll say. Although we had a very smooth paper on this picture, I still feel that the particles could be manipulated enough to create textures there, and they layered up really nice. Once each layer had dried, you could go over it again, and it didn't disrupt the layer beneath too much. And I tend to find that with the Derwent product, especially with the ink tents, which is not supposed to budge once it's dried. I'm gonna assume they use the same binder in their other paint-based products. I might have to look into that a little bit more. I also wish, actually, I could get my hands on this binder itself. I think that would be really useful to use in perhaps the watercolour marker pens you can get because sometimes it's so frustrating when it brings colours back to life and you don't want it to. And as well um, with the brushos too, anything dye based, if I could just use this binder to keep things still. I feel like I perhaps wouldn't get so frustrated with them, but I'm totally digressing here. I thought using the blue tones would be perfect to create a bit of depth on this badger because the fur at the back is a little bit lighter. I know they're a black and white creature, but obviously there are different tones of colours in there and the blues worked really nicely to create a sense of depth without having to water down just the base colours there. I was also quite surprised by how well the white layered over the top. Again, I'm going to assume it's a chalk based product like the Taylor's chalk from the scroller box. I wouldn't say it was a true white and that's fine. I, I don't mind that because if I was to add something subtly up there onto the paper, I think it would be nice just to see a bit of contrast there. So I also appreciate that. There wasn't 
a great deal of problems as well when it came to just adding some slight tonal areas on the white parts of the badger. I didn't get any I didn't get any situations where there was too much loss of control because I, I do kind of like letting watercolor mediums do their own thing, but I also want them to be relatively predictable too. And there were no nasty surprises here. For the next picture, I thought I would use as an addition the charcoal from that scroller box. I used the darkest one there and I've also used a textured paper. I believe that would be the artful paper. Laying that initial layer down on such a textured paper was actually really quite nice and cathartic and I do feel that these paints alongside using charcoals, I think I really could get to like this medium more. I still don't like getting my hands dirty. I hate the amount of dust that's produced because it's like glitter. You think you've got it all and then you find you haven't and it's, it's usually too late and someone will be like, oh, what's that all up your face? And yeah, it's probably gonna be charcoal with me. But again, I digress there. I'm sure we all have these encounters with these messy mediums. It's not just me, let me know down below. <laughs> but after filling that larger area in with the stick of charcoal, which was quite nice and easy, it was time to start adding some colour and textures onto the owl's body. This is where I really grew to appreciate the granulating effects of this medium and I did a bit of a wet and wet technique and again introduced some of those blues in there. I found that the glowing embers and thistles also added some just a little bit of variation of colour in there and again I'm really happy with how it moved and, and settled into the textures of the paper. I loved it. I, I, I think, I think finally I might be liking charcoal and as well it kind of encourages me to perhaps want to use it in a more traditional sense. As for the paint itself on its own, just ignore the charcoal stick there, it didn't budge too much, it didn't smudge when I used it. I didn't go over it in an eraser because there was nothing I really wanted to lift off there so I can't vouch for that. I do recommend though if you're using the charcoal sticks and you use it as a traditional charcoal, I do recommend using a fixative still, even if you have used water on there, I still recommend using a fixative because that area of this picture did still come off. With the absence of any yellow tones in there, and that's perfectly understandable because that's just not gonna work with charcoal, I did use a pastel pencil and diluted that just for the owl's eye, but everything else was either charcoal or the paint pans. I did also use a charcoal pencil for the owl's beak, but that diluted really well and I had a really nice sharp line. I also used it for the eye too. I'm not really sure who this set would be targeted for. I think maybe watercolour enthusiasts and maybe charcoal enthusiasts too, perhaps wanting to try something different. However, I do like the fact Durant is experimenting with different types of mediums and different ways to apply them. And I love the results that we're getting from these. Even with their metallic paints, they weren't your conventional, really bright over the top metallics. I still feel they had something new to add and I really like how Durant is just pursuing new things here. I think that's great for us artists and us curious artists as well, wanting to try something new. As you can see, it cost me $25.99. I got this from my local art shop and you should definitely support yours too. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. There should be some more on screen I think you'll like. And in the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.